Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look into another terrible case with you. Have you ever wondered why most horror stories start with a happy scene? This must have been what went through the minds of those who were terribly affected by the sudden death of the 19-year-old Andrea Vasquez. She doesn't deserve this. We're just trying to process um, all of this. Um, a young lady whose life of love with her dear boyfriend was abruptly and brutally ended. Let's find out how this bright and loving relationship tragically took a dark and unexpected turn. Andrea Vasquez, the 19-year-old victim of a gruesome murder and kidnap, was born and raised in Downey, California, where she lived in a one-story house with her father, Eduardo Vasquez, mother, Anna Vasquez, and her older sister, Edlyn Vasquez. She has been described as Hispanic, 5'3", with brownish-red hair and brown eyes. She was a fashion student at Fullerton College, and she was just about to begin her second year at the school, shortly before her life was unexpectedly cut short. She also worked at a mall in Cerritos. She had dreams and aspirations to become a well-known, established fashion icon, making a name for herself in the industry. She was said to be a quiet, introverted, and devoted child with a good sense of humor, always lighting up the atmosphere wherever she found herself. She did not move with many friends, but she was said to have had good friends who loved her selflessly and had good, fun times with her. She wanted the good, comfortable life of a famous clothing designer, and she also desired to become a millionaire. She liked to keep her room organized and neat. In an interview with her sister, Edlin, she said Andrea would always complain when someone left her stuff out of place. However, Andrea always created a space for her pets in the house. Andrea had had various career choices as she first wanted to be a veterinarian, although her choice changed down the line. Andrea Vasquez had a loving relationship with her family. Her mother, Anna, said that her daughter was really good at lifting people's moods. She mentioned one of her friends had an accident and was left in a wheelchair, and Andrea, by talking to him, lifted him up from the sadness he had. She also said that Andrea made her days happier many times. Andrea also really enjoyed listening to music. Her favorite artist was Kaylee Uchis, who also inspired her dressing style. Her mother said that she always talked about wanting to design clothes for artists and expensive brands and even create her own online boutique. Fashion design professor Renee Young taught Andrea when she started schooling at Fullerton College. She had completed her first year as a fashion major and was about to start her second year just days before she was murdered. Young said that Andrea had a unique style of designing and always pushed herself to do more. Her teacher added that Andrea was always on top of what was trending at the moment. She knew the trending designs and her fashion gallery, which she made as a final project, was one of the most unique in that class. She was also in a beautiful relationship with her boyfriend, who chose to remain anonymous. The news of her death really surprised and hurt her loved ones and those who were around her. Just let her go, just drop her off anywhere in the hospital. Just please, if you could just find it in your hearts, just please let her go. She's my life. She's a little girl. She's everything for me. Andrea lived the ideal life for most ladies of her age. Most ladies younger than she was must have aspired to be like her, looking up to her. She had ambitions, which she was actively pursuing. With the full support of her loved ones, she had a family that cherished her, and she was dating the guy she was in love with. Andrea's boyfriend described every moment with her as a dream. Andrea's boyfriend, who wishes to remain anonymous, expressed the depth of his love for Andrea, describing every moment with her as a dream. I loved her more than anybody could understand. Every moment with her was like a dream, you know? However, the dream turned into a nightmare when a truck pulled up on that fateful night, opening fire on the young couple as they sat on the trunk of their car. Maybe there were some hidden details about Andrea's ideal life that eventually led to her death. The last time Andrea Vasquez was seen was shortly after midnight on Sunday, 20th of August, 2023, 
in the parking lot of Penn Park, located at Penn Street, according to a statement from Whittier Police Department. The police were trying to piece together what happened to Andrea, and they were hoping someone could have seen her. They were saying she was last spotted wearing a pretty distinctive outfit, a black long sleeve crop top, khaki pants, and black low top Converse shoes. That's a pretty specific description, so they hoped maybe someone would remember seeing her in that getup. Also, the police mentioned that Andrea had a couple of tattoos that might help identify her. She had got a tattoo on the back of her neck that says Edlin, her sister's name, and another one on the top of her right hand that shows the Aries constellation. The police were really hoping someone would come forward with information about Andrea's disappearance. Maybe someone saw her with someone suspicious, or maybe someone knows something about her whereabouts. Whatever it was, every little bit could count in this case. She was in the car with her boyfriend when an armed suspect got close, approached the car, and began firing shots in their direction. Andrea Vasquez's boyfriend ran off the scene of the shooting to avoid getting hit by the bullets being fired and to seek help. But when he returned, he saw blood near his car, and he found out that his girlfriend, Andrea Vasquez, was missing. He became nervous and suspected that the person who shot at them had kidnapped Andrea while he ran away to save his life. He did not know if she was dead or alive before she was taken away, but he knew for sure that the love of his life was in severe danger, and he needed to get all the help he could before things escalated beyond anyone's control. Andrea's boyfriend described the killer as someone with no emotion in his eyes. According to him, the suspect looked like he was on a mission, and he did not have a heart. Andrea's family and boyfriend became desperate to get help. Andrea Vasquez's sister, Edlin Vasquez, who she lived with in Los Angeles, put out a plea with a Facebook post to alert the public and ask for their help in finding her sister. She wrote that her sister was shot and kidnapped at Penn Park, and her last location, according to what she tracked, showed Moreno Valley. Me and my sister share locations. I follow the location all the way to the last ping. I get there before any cops. I get there and all I see is um, a pile of uh, blood. Out of anxiety, she added that her sister's condition was currently unknown, as no one had heard anything from her or about her from anyone. She pleaded that if anyone had any information concerning her missing sister, they should share by contacting her. She ended the post by telling people to kindly help her repost so that the notice about her missing sister could reach more people. They contacted the local police department and gave them Andrea's location, which they tracked through her phone. However, during the entire process, they ran into a problem. The local police told them that they had to go to Whittier Police, but Ana Vasquez, who was visibly shaken, complained out of fear that she couldn't even drive. They say, you, you have to go to Whittier Police. And I say, I can't even drive. I, I was shaking, I, can, I cannot drive. And they said, then you have to wait till they come here. When retired LAPD detective Moses Castillo learned of the incident and the response of the local police, he questioned it emphasizing that the Downey police should have chased the kidnapper, even if it meant going into another area. In response to the criticism by the Whittier police, the Downey Police Department joined the investigation on August 20th, 2023. Why couldn't they do that? Simple as that. You get in that car, go code three, and respond towards that way, and on the way over there, you start communicating to your communications, notify CHP, let's get an airship, let's get it's got, you know, resources running in that direction and connect with the lead agency to get on the same page. After the Whittier Police Department asked for help, finding Andrea's boyfriend, because he was the one who had been with Andrea and had seen her being attacked. The Downey officers immediately got into action. They quickly found and spoke with the boyfriend at Andrea's parents' home in Downey, just 10 minutes after getting the call. They gathered the necessary information from Andrea's boyfriend and Andrea's family, sharing details like her phone's location data with Whittier officers. Downey and Whittier police worked together to try to find Andrea, but unfortunately, her body was later found in a field in Moreno Valley. It was a sad and unfortunate discovery 
that caused absolute grief for Andrea's boyfriend and her family. It was around 11.50 p.m. local time, Monday, 21st of August, that the investigators in charge of the murder and kidnap case found Vasquez's body in a vegetation field off Alessandro Boulevard and Merwin Street in Moreno Valley. After the news of Andrea Vasquez's horror kidnapping, people came out to start a huge search to try to find the missing 19-year-old, and that search ended in tragedy when the authorities who were thoroughly searching the area of Moreno Valley made a gruesome discovery. Actually, it is unclear where and how exactly she died. The investigation remains ongoing, but police said that it seems that the attack on Andrea Vasquez and her boyfriend was randomly targeted. Gabriel Esparza, a 20-year-old from Whittier in Los Angeles County, was arrested for kidnapping and shooting 19-year-old Andrea Vasquez. What's really surprising is that Gabriel is the son of a California fire captain. The police department arrested and took Gabriel Esparza into custody at his job in Lakewood without any problems. They also found the weapon he used to shoot Andrea and her boyfriend, as well as his truck, a 2013 white Toyota Tacoma. He was also charged with murder and kidnapping, and he's being held in jail with no chance of bail. This was a really serious case. The case was sent to the district attorney's office on August 23rd, so they could take it even more seriously and keep the necessary investigation going. The police department did not share any more details because they were still looking into it, and that made sense, since they wanted to make sure they got all the facts straight. The prosecutors mentioned that Gabriel Esparza was accused of shooting at Andrea Vasquez and her boyfriend in a random attack. He was said to have kidnapped Andrea Vasquez after shooting her. He tried to rape her before dumping her body in a field, Funny enough, Gabriel Esparza's attorney, Ambrosio Rodriguez, described him as a good and well-brought-up kid from a good family whose father is a Los Angeles County Fire Department captain. He said that everyone involved in and following the case were in shock, and everyone who knew him could not wrap their heads around the fact that he had been charged with that crime. He added that Gabriel Esparza was actually scared, and he was only beginning to understand what was happening after the crime had been committed. Los Angeles County District Attorney, George Gascon, announced on the 23rd of April that Gabriel Sean Esparza of Whittier was charged with one count of murder, one count of willful, deliberate and premeditated attempted murder, one count of kidnapping to commit rape, one count of kidnapping, one count of assault with intent to commit rape, and two counts of attempted forcible rape. Also, Gabriel Sean Esparza was accused of committing murder during the course of a kidnapping and also of committing murder during the course of an attempted rape. So the police are saying that Gabriel Sean Esparza did not just commit these crimes, he actually used a rifle himself while doing them. And we are talking about all seven of the charges against him. It's important to note that Gabriel is actually quite young, and it's always tragic when someone so young gets involved in a case as horrible as that of Andrea Vasquez. The district attorney's office is responsible for making sure that people are held accountable for their actions, and that was exactly what was happening in this case. The district attorney expressed his deep sympathies with the family of Andrea Vasquez. He said that the hearts of everyone on the side of Andrea Vasquez ached for the extremely painful loss of Andrea Vasquez's young life. He stated that the cruel nature of the crime, including the murder, kidnapping, and attempted rape on Andrea Vasquez, was very shocking, and it had a terrible effect at the very core of the community. District Attorney Gascon said that his office will work very hard and tirelessly to hold Gabriel Sean Esparza accountable for his brutal actions against Ms. Vasquez and her partner. In that moment of grief, he also sent his deepest condolences to the family of Ms. Andrea Vasquez as they were coping with the painful tragedy that had befallen their family. Gabriel Esparza said he was not guilty of the charges against him. His next court date was set for October 25, 2023 at the Clara Shortridge Foltz Criminal Justice Center where a judge would have to decide if there was enough evidence to send the case to trial. He was being held in jail with no chance of bail. 
if he was found guilty, he could face life in prison with no chance of parole. Just two months after Gabriel Esparza pleaded not guilty to charges in relation to Fullerton College student Andrea Vasquez's death, his preliminary hearing was pushed to January 2024 by a Los Angeles Superior Court judge. The day of the hearing was a tough day for the loved ones of Andrea Vasquez, who was tragically murdered. About 30 of her family and friends showed up to a courtroom in downtown Los Angeles to support her and seek justice even in her death. The man accused of taking her life, Gabriel Sean Esparza, was in court for the first time, and it was a pretty emotional scene. The judge, Carrie White, decided to schedule another hearing for January 23, 2024, to determine if there was enough evidence to move forward with the case. This was according to an email from Vanessa Dunn, who worked with the LA County District Attorney's Office. It was actually worth noting that Gabriel Sean Esparza, the accused, had already pleaded not guilty to the seven charges against him, which included murder, kidnapping, and attempted rape. He made this plea back on August 23, 2023, but the day of the hearing was an important step in the process. The loved ones of Andrea Vasquez were seeking justice and closure, and they were hoping that the legal system would deliver. The Vasquez family were really going through a tough time at that point. Their advocate and spokesperson, Moses Castillo, who used to be a detective with the LAPD, said that the preliminary hearings for the guy accused of murdering, kidnapping, and raping Andrea, Gabriel Esparza, might go on for a whole year or even into 2025 before the actual trial starts. That's a long time to wait for justice, and it's understandable that the family was anxious for closure. Some of Andrea's loved ones showed up to the courthouse wearing white t-shirts with her picture and birthday on them, which said, in loving memory. It was a really sweet way to honor her and keep her memory alive. The t-shirts were a small but powerful way for the family to show their love and support for each other during that extremely difficult time. A few family members and friends got to the courthouse early, probably to get settled and composed before the hearing started. But a big group of them, including Andrea's mom and sister, showed up just as the hearing was about to start. They all wanted to be there to support each other and make sure justice was properly and adequately served. It was heartwarming and amazing to see how the family were sticking together through all that they were going through. They had a sense of unity and support for one another, despite the brutal occurrence. The whole scene was pretty emotional, with a lot of people showing up to support the Vasquez family and make sure that Esparza faced justice. It was clear that Andrea was loved by a lot of people and her memory would live on through her family and friends. Later on, the accused, Gabriel Esparza, showed up to the courtroom wearing handcuffs and an orange jumpsuit. He was represented by his lawyer, Ambrosio Rodriguez, who was trying to defend him. But Esparza did not stay in the courtroom for long. He was taken back to custody after less than a minute. It was a really quick in and out. On the other side, the prosecutor, Beth Silverman, who was representing the state of California, joined the hearing remotely. But for some reason, only her voice was heard, no video. That was a bit unusual, but I guess it was not uncommon in those kinds of cases. Anyway, Moses Castillo, the Vasquez family's advocate and spokesperson, first heard about Andrea's disappearance through a post on Instagram from the Whittier Police Department back in August 2023. Can you believe it? Social media can be really powerful in spreading the word and getting help in situations like this. He later stated that little did he think that just a few hours later the family would reach out to him. So, after Esparza was taken back into custody, Andrea's family left the courtroom and gathered in the hallway. They formed a circle around Moses Castillo, their advocate and spokesperson, so everyone could hear him clearly. Castillo spoke to them in Spanish, explaining what had just happened in court that morning and what they could expect in the coming weeks. He gave them a heads up that the next step was probably just going to be a date change, meaning the preliminary setting scheduled for January would likely just get a new date, but everything else would stay the same. 
Andrea's family was likely feeling a mix of emotions, relief that the process was moving forward, but also anxiety about what was likely to come. They were probably trying to stay strong and focused on getting justice for their loved one, and Castillo was there to support them every step of the way. The next preliminary setting still took place in the same courtroom, in the Clara Shortridge Foltz Criminal Justice Center in Los Angeles, but with a new date, and they hoped for some progress in the case. You know, it's really puzzling. The investigators haven't found any motive so far for why Andrea Vasquez was harmed. They're still trying to figure out what drove the suspect to do what he did. And the really scary thing is, officials think Andrea was just randomly targeted. That means she wasn't specifically chosen for any particular reason. She was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's so unsettling to think about because we all walk around assuming we are safe, and then something like this happens and it shakes us up. The thought that someone could just be walking down the street, minding their own business, and then get hurt for no reason at all. It's just really disturbing. Everyone concerned and connected to the family hoped that some answers were found for Andrea's family's sake and for the community's peace of mind. We all need to feel safe and secure and when something like this happens, it takes away that sense of security. They hoped that the investigators would keep working hard to get to the bottom of the dreadful case and bring some closure to everyone who was affected in one way or the other. Andrea's sudden and violent death left a huge hole in her family's heart. I mean, can you imagine losing someone so dear to you so suddenly? One day they're here, and the next, they're gone. And the worst part was, the family had been thrust into the spotlight because of it. Everyone wanted to know about the case, but hardly anyone had asked about Andrea's life, what she was like, what made her special, what memories they shared with her. As they waited for the case to move forward and sought justice for her murder, they were trying to focus on the good times, the happy memories they made with Andrea. They are remembering the laughter, the inside jokes, the moments that made her smile. They are holding on to those moments tightly because that is all they have left of her now. It's so important to remember the person, not just the case. Andrea was a daughter, a sister, a friend, a loved one. She had dreams, hopes, fears, and desires. She had a life, and that life was cut short. Andrea's boyfriend, who was also affected by her sudden and violent death, shared his heartfelt feelings. He said, I will always love her and miss her a lot every day. It's like he was acknowledging that she was gone, but her memory and their love would stay with him forever. He was not just saying it either. You could easily feel the pain and longing in his words. He's not alone either. Andrea's family and friends all felt the same way. They were trying to move forward, but it's hard when the wound is still so fresh. They were just taking it one day at a time, remembering the good times they shared with Andrea and trying to honor her memory in any way they could. It's amazing how love can be both a source of strength and a source of pain. On one hand, it gives us the courage to keep going, even in the toughest times. On the other hand, it makes us feel the loss even more deeply. But in the end, it's worth it. Because love is what makes us human, and it's what makes life worth living. The entire family of Andrea never remained the same after the loss of their daughter. Her sister, Edlin, wrote on social media, alongside a picture of her beloved sister, My beautiful angel, I'm completely destroyed. Words cannot describe this pain. I love you with all my heart and soul. Until we meet again, my beautiful baby. R.I.P. Another person added in tribute, Right now there is no comfort or words to show our feeling. Know that my dear Andrea is resting in peace, and now she enjoys the presence of God. Enrique Vasquez, her grief-stricken father, shared his heartbreak with reporters, saying, I lost my daughter, my angel. It's the saddest day. Her mother also expressed her deep hurt when she said, it's a pain nobody deserves, she was my everything. A fundraiser was also set up to support the family, 
and people gave generously to show their love and support. We've come to the end of today's video. What do you think about this case? If you want more videos like this, subscribe and click the notification button to get notified when we have a new video for you. Until next time, bye for now.